This is Kenneth S. with your Colfax News, and I'm down here on 16th and California with Eric Stevenson. Eric Stevens. Excuse me, I apologize. Stevenson. Stevenson. Okay, I got that right. And we're going to be talking today about the way to change the, the thought process and the belief system and the way that can change the overall dynamics of your environment and your reality. Uh, Eric is working with Reverend Leon Kelly down at the Open Door Project and Program and he has made some tremendous strides in his life and in the lives of a lot of other people and along the way uh, he has had some bumps in the road as a lot of people do when they're going through transformations in their lives but true to form he has back, bounced back He's a resilient brother, and so today we're just going to take this opportunity to talk about some of the things that he's gone through along the way. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So, uh, first and foremost, tell me about some of the opportunities or things that have led you to the Open Door organization. Um, I keep coming back for, for a couple of reasons. Um, it's a good foundation for me, no matter what other people think or whatever. You know um, their past experiences been with my boss. Um, it's, it's helped to keep me grounded. It's helped to keep me um, focused on what I need to do. It's made me a better person. And it's it's easy said that once I shy away from it, I become someone else. How did you meet the rep? Um, in 2000. Well, well, back all the way up in, in '89, um, he came to my aid. I was shot in the Holly, and um, he came to my aid. And ever since then, he's been in my life. So. Um, it's been a long going relationship, on and off. Right. Um, I shy away and do my thing, then I come back, he finds me, whatever the case may be. Um, and I've always had the gift of gab to be able to talk to um, other youngsters that really don't have a clue to you know, where they're headed with this life. Not only is it gangs and money and drugs, but addiction and all those other things that come into play when you're in that street life. So, you know, I've had the, I've had the privilege to go inside of Gilliam, halfway houses, um, places that I would have never been able to get into without his assistance. And in doing so, being able to get into these other facilities, what are some of the messages that you carry in to the facilities that you believe has the most impact to affect a change for them? And also, that keeps you grounded and has an effect for you. Well, first of all, um, going into facilities, half of the, half of the even the kids or the, even the adults with the kids, I know their parents. I know you know straight up what's going on, the issues from when they was little or whatever, because I hung out with most of their parents. Um, going into the adult facilities, they know who I am, so they watch my struggle. They know. Um, that if I can do it or, or make a change, that they can do it. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm talking about they've seen me grimy, they've seen me bounce back where you know I'm giving back to them, helping with jobs, whatever. So there's no secret, even about my addiction. There was no secret about you know I just put it all on the line. This is what it is. This is what it can be if you go back to it. You know. So um, for the most part, um, just keeping it real, man. Just keeping it real, um, letting them know that hey, we're all human, and there's gonna be mistakes. But it's what you do with those mistakes. It's what you learn from those mistakes, and and, and 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 in a sense, you know, stay strong with it. You know what I'm saying? I've I've had a million things seem like go wrong um, with health and um, issues, uh, street life, or whatever. Um, and I've had to, I had to live each one of those chapters in my life. I've lost people, friends that I was with for years. I've lost relationships where women just couldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so, you know, I, I've, at the end of the year, at the end of last year, I had to take a look at, you know, who am I? Who am I to me? You know, not to uh, a woman or not to my friends, but who am I to myself? You know, what am I trying to get out of this to better myself, to keep going backwards and then bouncing back? Because inconsistency has been, you know, one of my biggest things, man. And, uh, like I said, it stopped me with relationships with friends, family members. You know, I got to the point where at one point, I, for like a couple months there, at the end of the year, I just cut everybody off, man, trying to deal with um, issues with my health and issues with, you know, um, going back to the street. Just, right. you know, that whole lifestyle. Um, and and it, it, it made me shut down. And those that loved me, 
you know, after a while, it was like, all right, well, he'll come back. Or or maybe he won't, you know what I'm saying? But this is the defining moment of what's going to happen with him. I'm about to be 50 years old this year. Uh, man, it's a lot of my partners that didn't even make it to 40, didn't make it to 30, you know what I'm saying? So I'm blessed in so many ways, man, that um, I just try to keep striving forward and keep smiling, man, at, you know, the, the blessings that I'm, I'm continually giving. If you had to give somebody some advice about Colfax as a paradigm, as a street of woe, as a street of uh, pitfalls, as a street of trials and tribulations, what would you say to them as a way of being able to get away from that as a trap? Um, my, you know, the cool part about that you, you asking me that is my last experience there. I had to take a step back and look at it from across the street, from across the street, from where everybody was at and just look, you know, at the dynamics of the devil advocate. It's just, you know, you can always play like, hey, man, I'm going to go back and I'm going to get some money and I'm going to go, you know, but like I said, there's so many other things that come to play. If you was once an addict, you're going to continue to be an addict on Colfax. If you think for one minute that you can go and change that, you can't, you can't. Eventually, it'll catch up to you. Um, we can all play the game of we're gonna make a quick buck and we're gonna do a move and nah um, There's so many so many elements of things happening out there with death and um, um, Prison and you know just a whole dynamic of you know bad things going on man. So uh, you know if I was if I was Given the opportunity to tell somebody about hey not going to Colfax or not going to hustle um, Back in that lifestyle it would be that there's a better way There's a much better way than going there um, all you have to do is put one foot forward and, and, and elevate. You got to step outside a box. A young lady that I was dating a while ago told me that I was trapped inside of a box. And the more I started to communicate with her and see things, I really was inside of a box. You know what I'm saying? My way of thinking. You know, I, I started going to these plays. I started doing different things, going to basketball games, football games. And I was like, damn. And it, it was, I was like a little kid because I hadn't been to these things. And I've been in Colorado for years. You know, I had never been to... Uh, uh, to a to a black opera, I had never been to see the Nutcracker. Right, so right, those right. things was like, oh my God, I'm a little kid, right. you know, stuck up in here. And I was like, damn, boy, you're gonna be 50 years old and you've never experienced life. Right, right. I've never experienced. The first time I experienced going to a movie by myself was maybe about a few weeks ago. I just creeped off to the show, um, and man, it was it was, it was something so um, energizing to me that I just took the time out to go. Um, and, and just see a movie by myself, you know what I'm saying? And it, and it made me feel like this is what I need to be doing, man. Now I spend time alone at home by myself. I do a lot more reading just because um, the females that I'm trying to gravitate myself to, um, they do a lot of reading. And so I, I, I'm put up on that by, you know, turn the TV off, man. Read some books, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm having conversations with people that now they're like, wow, you know about that? And so we get into a whole big old you know, conversation about politics and, and what's going on in the world, things that I hadn't, you know, in that lifestyle stuck there so long. I started when I was 13. So you can imagine, man, I was just stuck in that, you know, that rut of, uh, I can get a sack, I can make this happen, I go, you know what I'm saying? And, and so five girls with no, you know, no uh, future of, of what we gonna do. We just doing it for the moment, um, carried on into, later on in my years and so now I'm with women that are like so simple and I'm making it so complicated right you feel me so um, like I said man it took me it took it took a while for me to get Colfax out of me mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so when I go back down there and I see cats you know it's just is it possible to get Colfax out of you oh no question no question man come on man you can go to church and, and you know and, and pray on it and ask God you know and, and it took me to get in places even when I was on the facts when he started to really take me away from that, I would be in there doing my thing or whatever, and I would creep off somewhere and I just bow my head and say, "Hey, man, listen, you know, I'm asking for guidance. I'm asking for strength. You know, what I'm saying, give me knowledge to move away from this." And slowly but surely, it came to the point where um, he did, he did, and, and, and it gravitated towards. I stayed away for a long time, and then I got to the point where my mindset, where I couldn't talk to people, I shut down, and I went back. But when I went back, he allowed me to see something colder than I ever seen when I was out there. He, he, he allowed me to see that some of these people are just stuck. See, they ain't like, they're trying to move around. They want to be here. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and so this is what's going to happen if you continue to think that this is an outlet. You know what I'm saying? You're going to stay stuck, stagnated down here too and let life pass you by. You know what I'm saying? I watch friends down there die of pneumonia, um, you're up in cars and shot on the block. And, you know, I, I just I was just with this cat. Now he goes across the street, now he's dead. You know what I'm saying? Oh man, I've seen some things happen. Um, even I had an accident, uh, incident down there with some younger gang members. Um, that caught me off guard, you know what I'm saying? That could have took my life, you know? Um, but it opened my eyes to, hey man, this is no joke, you know what I'm saying? These people out here surviving and it's the young generation. So it's time for me to get out the way. Not only is it time for me to get out the way, but it's time for me to try to help them get back to some realness, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, I go down there on a different note. I go down there, um, I still got partners that's in that life, but I don't shy away from it because I think it's in me to give back. Now when I can't, I move around. Or if I feel like, hey, man, I've been here too long, they just don't get it, I move around, you know what I'm saying? And, and so, as I'm, I'm sitting here even today, um, I've been writing a lot of poetry, trying to put a lot of things that I've seen out there, uh, people, places, and things into spoken word because not only does the people on Colfax need to know it, but I, I, when I was out there, I met a lot of CEOs, I met a lot of... Uh, um, stockbrokers. I met lawyers. I mean, I mean, these are addiction has nothing to do with just Colfax. People come from to Colfax from Cherry Hills and wherever. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like uh, you just go down Colfax and you see just all these guys down on and, and women getting high. But there's people that come out there and spend thousands that I've had the opportunity to say, "Hey, man, that's enough. You need to go home. You need to call what? You need me to call wifey or somebody to come get you because this has played its course. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to the ATM no more." You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I, and so that's been my uh, take on that whole little strip thing. But even with that, man, it's come to a point now with me where I'm trying to, I'm trying to go past that. I'm trying to uh, deal with the kids that are in school now, so that they never have to go out there. You know, even the kids in the juvenile places where they never have to go back to that life. Because some of those kids, man, are straight A students, got a bad break, mama not there, daddy on dope. Same, same kind of dynamics. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, I'm just trying most definitely now, this year, is trying to put forth some effort to make things happen for even guys out of prison that say they can't find jobs. I'm trying to make that happen. So Easy, if anybody wanted to get in contact with you, if they wanted to help out, donate anything, money, um, resource material, if they wanted to give you any job leads or anything like that to help out to, with your cause, how would they get in contact with you? Um, you can reach me at... Um, ericstevenson.chinup.gmail.com or you can call me at 303-893-4264 um, or hit me on Facebook at Eric Stevenson um, and, and I'll most definitely be um, happy to hear from you. Okay. Um, three questions. Um, one, what, where is the best place to eat on um, Nash's Chicken House on Quebec and Colfax. Okay, okay, good one. Uh, you're the second person to say that. Nash's Chicken House, remember that. Two, what was the best learning experience that you've had the opportunity to go through on Colfax? Um, I helped the, I helped the ex-football player get home to his, back home to his family, get himself grounded again, and he thanked me in a, in a hell of a way. Um, most tragic experience that you've gone through? Um, about two months ago, I was sitting outside shooting dice, hanging out with one of my little partners. Um, we just got through eating. Uh, he walked across the street to his room and was killed, shot five times in the back. And uh, that was crazy. I heard the shots, seen the guys run from his room, watched his girl, you know, go through the experience of losing him. Right. Sorry, you guys, uh, the audience of Colfax, Reverend Kelly has made a cameo appearance, and so if he would like to come on board, uh, come on around, Rev, and say hello to the uh, audience of your Colfax News. He is... All right, all right. Uh, this is Reverend Leon Kelly, you guys, and we are again down at the Open Door uh, facility. This is Reverend Leon Kelly. How you doing? In the, live and in person. Live <laughs> and in person. Yeah, you know, uh, Reverend Kelly, uh, we'd like to welcome you to the show. Um, what do you have forecast for 2016? Well, you know, our big thing has been trying to close out 2015. You know, we know that 2015 has been a very aggressive year. 
uh, or you know, matter of fact, at Mark Star, going into 2016, our 32nd year of uh, dealing with uh, the uh, concern that we have here in our city, you know, pertaining to the youth uh, who are choosing to make certain choices. Uh, last eight months of uh, 2015 was very aggressive. Uh, at the end of the year, unfortunately, we had on what I call my death list, uh, 61 on a death list who were not blessed to be able to see another year. But yet, that's a terrible number, but on the other side of it, there's been a lot of positive things that have happened uh, that we've been involved with to try to defuse uh, situations. Uh, many of our Christmas party was, we had well over 700 kids that attended that and families. Uh, there's been a lot of, again, positive things that have happened due to people who have uh, supported us in our efforts. You know, the things that have been done behind the scenes. Uh, the th things that uh, allows us to be able to put some things in balance. 61 is certainly a terrible number, but uh, if the involvements that have been put forth hadn't been put in place, the numbers could have been much, much worse. So uh, we're looking for a uh, prosperous year going into 2016, uh, trying to heal uh, from those uh, mishaps in uh, 15 and use it as a springboard to go into another year. As I often say that we may not know what 2016 holds, Absolutely. but for me, it is comforting to know who holds 2016. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we're looking forward to going forth, and as uh, we look at, uh, we're dealing with folks, we're dealing with consistency. Those of you, if you see this young man here, I knew him. Uh, I've been like his surrogate dad for so many years, and seeing him grow up, and uh, some kids are just hard headed. You know, his own, some kids are like that particle son. Right. They go out there and, uh, and I uh, sit back and I have to sometimes send my hounds out there to try to bring them <laughs> back in. But yeah, as they go and feel like they got to do what they got to do, they always know they got a place to let their head come back home. So. Rick, if people wanted to find out uh, about upcoming events with your organization, where could they find out information? Uh, if they wanted to do anything to contribute to your cause, where do they go to find out? They could go into our website, you what know, is as the info info at uh, info at open door youth dot com or either just go uh, to punch in www the rev dot org the rev dot org and then did a directive to our website and then they could go from there but it's info at uh, open door youth dot org okay. All right. Sounds good. God bless you okay so again one more uh, there has been, there's a young lady by the name of Bonita J who does some spoken word and she has put out a, uh, what is called, what is known as Bonita Shout Out. And Bonita, uh, Eric happens to be a spoken word guru, so he is going to facilitate this challenge for you right now. Eric, would you like to? Uh... Miss Bonita, I came up with something just for you. I am so glad you escaped the game. I've watched you go through your ups and downs and watch you claim your pain. I've watched you walk away from days on the end of being out there in the street. And the only thing I can understand about you is that you kept moving your feet. So now you're gone. I hope that you learn from the valuable lessons that you lived. And I hope that you understand that if I need you, I got you. And if you got me, I need you too. So let's pray and stay out of the street. Amen. Amen. Bonita, uh, I hope you are ready and have something prepared to rebuttal this piece of spoken word. Don't but be above, scared. <laughs> <laughs> above and beyond that, uh, true to form with the spoken word should be, it should be accompanied by some uh, form of community information, some form of um, upliftment, and Eric has definitely brought that to the table today. Not only do I challenge Bonita, but anybody listening, please offer a piece of spoken word, offer a piece of community information, offer some form of experience, strength, and hope here on your Hello. Colfax News, and I hey. appreciate you for tuning in today. Thank you, and have a blessed, blessed 2016. Chin up, okay. as he said. Chin up. <laughs>